Feel a test coming on. So I've been riding this thing, the Vareal F1 electric skateboard, um, called the F1, not for any uh, reference to me and my background, total coincidence, but it's called the F1. Um, I've been running it for around about a week now, putting it through various tests, various different conditions. I've had it out in the rain, I've had it on different road surfaces, I've had it on the, the country roads around where I live, but I also took it into London uh, for a test last week. So it's been through what I would call a number of different typical daily commutes, if you like. Um, I've run it, run the battery out completely to see what we get. I've taken it up some fairly steep hills as well. So I have tested various different aspects of it. And this is a board that comes in at 330 UK pounds. Um, so it's at the cheaper end of the electric skateboard range. Chinese uh, in manufacture, like lots of them are. I've tested a number of electric uh, skateboards from China on this channel, as many of you already know. And this particular one, the Vareal F1 board, shares a number of the components uh, that many of the other market leading uh, electric skateboards in this pri price range use. So things like the motors, the battery, uh, the ESC, the electronic speed controller uh, inside this thing are all shared components that lots of these type of boards use. So as you would expect with that, you get a very similar level of performance to many of the other boards as well in terms of range, in terms of acceleration. Um, I would say that this thing, I think the specs say this will do around about eight and a half miles on a charge. In reality, I think I got pretty close to that. I would say nearer to eight miles, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's pretty close. So that's all great. I've been really impressed with that. The acceleration, maybe less so. Uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with it, but I've certainly tested other boards uh, that have better acceleration in the same price range. And this is a, a hub motor board. So the, uh, the motors are inside the rear wheels uh, of the skateboard itself, sealed in there. Um, there are different ways of doing this. You can also have belt driven boards, of course, and you may have seen me test one of those before as well. The belt driven boards tend to give you a better launch, a better acceleration. Um, but they can be noisy and they have other pros and cons to them as well. This is a really clean, simple system where it's easy to maintain. In fact, there is no maintenance. Um, with, the, with the belt driven boards, of course, belts can wear, they can snap, they might need replacing. So a really easy out the box solution where you can just get it out of the box, turn it on and go. So in that sense, it's great. So there's lots of similarities with other boards with those shared components. But with the Vareal F1, what happens here is they've got some differences as well. And I happen to think those differences have been pretty good. In my tests, they've really come out as a positive change. And the biggest one of those that I can see is the board shape. Now you might be able to see from that, let's see, I don't know if you can see properly, uh, perhaps there you can see that the board is profiled in a concave shape. So it's concave in two directions, that way, and also that way as well. And that has a really positive effect. First of all, your feet are kind of locked in place by the raised edges. And that might seem trivial, but actually it's a really positive thing. That's a really uh, big step forward for me because I've ridden some boards which are perfectly flat along the top or even convex, some of them. And you can end up going over some bumpy terrain where the vibration at speed can actually shuffle your feet across the board and make you feel pretty unsteady and pretty uncomfortable as your feet start to vibrate towards the edge, as you can imagine. With this thing though, you're pretty safe. You're, you're locked in position, so your feet are not gonna move is the first thing, but you also feel like you have a lot more control because your, your kind of toes and your heels are pushing right down on the edges of the board and you have total feel because of these raised lips. So to make maneuvers, you can really easily feel the edge of the board under your toes. You can transfer your weight really easily. And I found for carving that this was actually one of the best boards that I've ridden, certainly in this price range, but I think perhaps even in any price range, this is one of the best, uh, partly due to that shape. The other thing it does, of course, is drop you down slightly. So your center of gravity does become lower because of the drop down board. It's not a huge drop, but it still has an effect. And, uh, and I happen to think that's quite good as well. I think um, together with this drop down board and also the fact that you can probably see there, the battery and controller element that are all inside here are in a particularly slim box. So it's a slimmer battery than we might have seen on some other boards. It's one cell thick rather than two cells thick that some of them are. And that means they've been able to stretch that out over a uh, 
a much thinner area which means the battery case which is made out of aluminium here nice and solid uh, that's a little bit thinner as well so with the lower board and the thinner case you end up having to having a lower center of garage gravity you as a rider are dropped down lower and therefore you feel much more stable and in control of this board so as a, a riding experience I really enjoyed it I think it's one of the best kind of commuting boards that I've ridden because it feels utterly safe, utterly in control, utterly predictable in what it does. You could put a different set of bushings on which might take some of the vibration out. There's a little bit of vibration through this but I didn't think it was too much. I've certainly had worse. I've probably had better as well. Um, but nothing that was so uncomfortable I couldn't feel like I'd, I could ride it for long periods of time. So a positive, a positive step forward from Vareel. This is an update to their previous uh, two iterations of the board and I have to say that I think within the limited scope that you have within this uh, budget end of the Chinese marketplace where we have a limited number of components going around all the boards they have managed to carve themselves out a slightly different approach to it and, and for me it's a decent approach so for £330 uh, speeds that you can get up to sort of close to 24 miles an hour 23, 24 miles an hour max uh, has three power settings on the controller slow medium and fast and in fast which i had it in all the time obviously it's around about 24 miles an hour and that's where you get your your around eight mile range obviously if you drop it down to a lower power setting you'll go further but the controller itself much better quality controller than i've seen on some of these other other chinese budget skateboards and it feels much more solid than some of the others it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart the controller is a wheel a thumb wheel which actually works really well uh, has a reasonable stroke on it so you have quite a lot of control in terms of accelerating and braking braking by the way applies regenerative braking through the hub motors so as you go through the braking phase it will start to put energy back into the battery to extend your range over the course of its use um, and the other thing that I really like about this is that the reverse mode is not activated with a tiny little silly button on the handle which I have complained about in many of my other videos from these kind of things where you can easily knock it by mistake on this one it's got a switch on the back it's a real positive switch you've got to either put it on or off you can't knock it by mistake so there is no situation where you're going to end up in reverse without realizing so that's really good too um, the control of the power and braking was brilliant much smoother than I've seen on some boards so as again, again, it just felt very stable, very controlled, very under control when I was riding this. Your power delivery nice and smooth, the braking not too aggressive. In fact, braking, the braking map in this thing was really quite clever because at maximum speed when you brake, it ap applies the brakes in a sort of kind of gradual, uh, gradual form. And then as you start to slow down, it puts more and more braking on so that you're not going to get thrown off the front of the board when you apply maximum brakes in an emergency stop. So actually that works really well. It will stop you pretty quickly and you can bring it to a complete standstill under control whilst you still feel stable on top of the board as well. So, so loads of real positives. In terms of negatives, um, the one that I could see that I, I didn't really like, and this is maybe just a personal thing, but because what they've done on the back of here is put the battery and this, the controller inside the same compartment here as opposed to lots of these boards that you may well have seen where they split them and have two compartments, one at the front, one at the rear. Everything's in the back, which means that the back end of the board is really tail heavy. Now, that's not really a problem when you're riding it, but when you're carrying it, it's really kind of awkward uh, to carry under your arm, um, almost to the point where you can only carry it hanging it onto the front with the back end dangling down. And because of the length of it, that can become a bit uncomfortable after a while. So. Maybe that's a bit picky, but that's just uh, one of the things I would say that is, is less than ideal. Um, other than that, I mean, I can't really find too much to, to say that's wrong with it. It's got an annoying rattle at the front end, which I have looked all over the place and just can't find what it is. Uh, without taking it apart, I'm not sure, but a really annoying rattle, but I'm sure that's not something that's, that's too severe and maybe just specific to this particular unit, I hope. I think for a 330 quid, that's including free delivery, by the way, from China to almost anywhere in the world. I don't think you can go too far wrong with this. It's a no frills board. You're not going to get little extras that come with it. Some other boards that I've seen have, have come with lights, have come with 
mounts that I can hang that you can hang them on the wall with, um, pouches for the controllers. You're not going to get any of that. But this is the budget end of the marketplace, and all that really matters is how the board looks, how it drives, how it rides, uh, how far it goes, and how fast it goes. And for those things, at this price range, I think you could do a lot worse than go for the real F1 board.